Hello everybody, my name is Stefan and I work in the Developer Relations team at Contentful and what I want to share with you today is a project that I was working on the last few days. When I started doing web development, I clearly remember the feeling today that it is very, very overwhelming because there is a lot of information out there, right? And in the first few years, I always had the feeling that I was not improving and that I felt a little bit stuck. And then after five years or six years, I discovered that writing down your learnings helps a lot to feel progressing. And this is what I do now for two years. And this is what I want to sh show you here. So what you see here is my uh, personal site. And it includes a lot of tiny, tiny posts. So writing blog posts is hard, right? But writing down a tiny learning is quickly done. And I now made it to a lot of learnings. And when I show this to people, the usual reaction is, okay, Stefan, but how do you do this? I don't want to set up servers and databases and I don't want to run a blog. I just want to document these tiny, tiny learnings. And my answer to this is that this runs on Netlify and Contentful. And this was the side project or the project I was working on the last few days. So what you see here is today I learned.netlify.com. So basically it's kind of the same thing. It includes um, several learnings and these learnings are very, very short. So writing these really doesn't take long and it has some categories and it includes a base tutorial. And all the steps that are included in this uh, base tutorial, I want to show you right now. And I want to show you that you can set this up for yourself in just a few minutes. And in case you're not familiar with Netlify, Netlify is basically your continuous integration service and hosts at the same time. And they provide this cool little button here. So are you ready to deploy this? Project to Netlify? Okay, let's do this. So I click this button and the first thing that Netlify does is it asks me to connect to GitHub. And why is that? Netlify will now a copy of the repository I defined, which is here, it's in my private GitHub and it's today I learned, and will place this in your own GitHub account. So when we, let's just do screencast here. And then it will ask for a Contentful Space ID, a Content Delivery Token and a Content Management Token. So Contentful is the um, API that will serve this static site. It's built with React and uh, with data. So let's go to Contentful and create a new space. So a space is a bucket of data, right? And let's call it today I learned, <laughs> here we go. And it's now an empty space, right? So when we navigate around here, we see that there is no content model, no content, nothing at all. But let's grab the credentials Netlify is asking for now. So let's go to API keys. And here we see that there are two different kinds of API keys. There are content delivery and preview tokens. These tokens are read-only. So they, when they are placed in your front-end application, it's not a big deal. And then there are content management tokens, which have write access. So you have to be really careful where you place these. And there's already an example key. So let's just rename this one to Netlify. And here we have the space ID. So let's place this one here. And we have the content delivery token, which goes here. And then it's asking for this content management token. And why is that? The reason for that is that the project I set up also includes um, a setup um, process to fill this space here with the data that, uh, that you just saw on today I learned.netlify.com. So let's just go to API keys and create a general, uh, gener uh, let's create a personal token. This token will then have the same access as the user that is currently logged in. So you have to be really careful with these. So let's just call it delete me because I'm cleaning up tokens um, regularly. So now we have a new write token to contend for. Let's go to Netlify and let's save that and deploy your own Today Alone project, all right? Cool. So this now should and will, <laughs> will redirect us to uh, Netlify. So what you see here is Netlify. And it's already deploying the new site. And one cool thing is that when you go to um, site settings, that you can define your own subdomain. I think that that is really nice. So what we can do now is uh, my today I learned. This is where the deploy um, will be available later. Um, setting up your own domains is also really, really easy in Netlify. So when we now go to the de um, deploys, we see that the first deploy is running. So let's have a look here. All right, and it's, it's installing um, node dependencies and it's using Puppeteer. So Puppeteer is a headless Chrome browser, which is used to generate the static site of the React project. And then you see here that 
an import is going, right? This import is using Contentful import. This is part of the Contentful infrastructure, and it uses a JSON file to um, put some data into a space, right? So this project here also includes a JSON file, which is then the base to set up your new space. So let's see how this is going. All right, it's processing, publishing assets, cool. And it looks like it's done. So let's go now here and let's uh, quickly refresh this. And now we should have um, the content for our Today I Learned, uh, today I learned um, blog set up. So we see here that there are categories, pages, and posts, and these have the following fields. And when we now go to content, you see that there are the two or three categories, three posts, and the tutorial, all of different types. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, so when we now go to Netlify, we see that our site is live. You can now click this preview deploy button here, and you see that we just defined the subdomain, right? It's my today I learned, and you see that we have now an exact copy of the project that I just showed you. It's um, showing some more setup instructions, but we will deal with this in a minute. So what we now did is that when I now go to Contentful and my private account, right? We set up, I should now have a new repository here, which is all right, nice. And what Netlify automatically did when we went through the setup process is that it defines a webhook. So whenever something is um, deleted, pushed, or updated in this repository, GitHub will ping Netlify to trigger a new build, right? So let's maybe just do this really, really quickly. And let's go to components. And there is a header. And let's just update that and let's see if it redeploys our site. So we can now go update it and we can go update header. And when we now, and we're, good, <laughs> we're committing directly to master, but that's all right for this sake. So when we now go to back to Netlify, we should see a new deploy uh, happening, right? So this is the connection from GitHub to Netlify. What is still missing though is the connection from Contentful to Netlify. So what we want to do is we want to go to settings, build and deploy. Here we go. Here we see the webhooks. And the thing is that now Netlify provides this URL, which automatically also will trigger a new build. So let's go to Contentful and let's establish the connection from Contentful to Netlify. So you can go to settings, webhooks, and here you see webhook templates, so that you don't have to hassle with a lot of configuration. So we can just say, okay, please um, define the build URL on Netlify, and we can create this one. And this now has the settings that whenever I publish or unpublish an entry or an asset, it will tell Netlify to rebuild. So let's quickly go back to Netlify, and let's see. All right, the second build is now done, which means that when I refresh this one here, we see that uh, the flow from code from uh, updating the public site uh, via GitHub commits or pushes or when you do changes to code base is already working. So the next thing is now that when I now update, for example, this article, and let's say "Hello World" from the screencast, and we can publish this. We can also go back to the deploys, and you see that there is another deploy happening. That, that, I think this is really, really cool. So this is now the public side, and it is still telling you that there are some few more things to do. So when you just want to start writing your stuff um, using, and you're fine with the layout and all the functionality, you only have to do this little thing here, which is removing the content management token, right? Because remember, content management tokens have write access. So let's just quickly do this, and we can go to deploy settings. And here you see the CMA token. These, these three values are the values that you defined in the installation process, and they are now available via system environment, vi vi environment variables. So let's just edit these, um, delete the CMA token, and also go to Contentful API keys. And let's get rid of this delete me here. Cool. And let's go back to the builds and trigger a new rebuild because the build was already running when I removed the content management token. So, but what we can check now already is that when we go to the this one here, you see that, oops, 
that the content is already updated. And the deploy only took, what, what did it take? 37 seconds. I think this is really cool for a static site workflow, right? And let's see, let's do this one. Um, let's get rid of the warning. So this is what I want to show you today. Um, I will write a um, series of uh, written down tutorials on how to build static sites uh, with React and uh, implement them on Netlify and Contentful in more detail. And now we are live, so the warning should be done. Cool. And if you have any questions or um, feedback, um, please let me know. And I also plan to record another um, uh, recording of how this site actually works and how the project works um, in the next few days. And that's it. See you next time.